And away we go. Well, welcome everybody. We're delighted to have you here with us today for our, uh, I guess, second ever um, TPF Thriveability Info Session. Uh, we're delighted that you could join us. We will um, jump into a slideshow mode in just a moment, um, but I'd like to just, again, acknowledge uh, all of you and say thank you for participating today. Um, we've got a, a large group. Uh, you represent a variety of different organizations uh, in the four county region on the Sun Coast. Uh, your missions are wide and varied. Your organizations range from small to large and everywhere in between. Uh, and we're thrilled to have a variety of um, folks, including uh, executive directors, CEOs, uh, board members and staff members from your organization. So thank you so much for joining us. I am going to share my screen or into slideshow mode and we will kick this off. So as I said, um, this is a session that is um, very focused on a topic that's near and dear certainly to our heart uh, and hopefully to yours as well. Um, and specifically, we want to introduce you to some opportunities um, that we're going to be providing to each of you and your organizations focused specifically on uh, our Thriveability initiatives. And I'll talk more in just a moment about what that means. Before uh, I do that, I'd like to um, introduce one of the members of our team from the Patterson Foundation, and his name is Connor LaGrange. Connor, are you there? Yes, I am. Thank you, Mike. Everyone, my name is Connor LaGrange, and I'm a fellow with the Patterson Foundation. I like to, to say I'm fellow version 3.0, but really all that means is I'm the third group of fellows that's come. I don't think it's uh, new and innovative to say 3.0. But quickly, before we start, we're going to go over a few Zoom housekeeping items. Noted that we've been doing Zoom for quite some time, but always a, a friendly reminder and refresh is good. So if you would, please remain muted during the entirety of today's session, just so we don't hear any feedback or folks talking on the phone while Mike and Larry are delivering their great news that they have for us today. Secondly, if you would, would you rename yourself with your first name and your organization name? There's a couple ways to do that. If you're on a desktop computer, there's gonna be three dots in your photo. Click that and rename will pop right up. If you're on a mobile device, such as an iPad or an iPhone, you can pull up your toolbar and click on participants, find yourself and you can rename yourself that way as well. There is gonna be a chance for some Q and A back and forth, but we ask that you send those questions into the chat box and Josephine and myself will do our best to monitor throughout the event and get those questions to Mike and Larry so that everything is answered for you. Other than that, I'll send it back over to Mr. Mike Oxman for, for another, uh, another few words. Thank you very much, Connor, much appreciated. We do have another housekeeping <clears throat> item to take care of, and it's one of the things that we uh, always do on our Zoom sessions. For those of you who know the Patterson Foundation, we do like our photos. So uh, we're gonna ask you in just a moment to say cheese, to smile and give you the opportunity to turn on your video so we can see your uh, smiling faces. Uh, so Josephine Eisenberg, are you there? Josephine? I'm here, if you'll stop sharing. Oh, there you go. Okay, perfect. Hello everybody, thanks for being here. I'm going to take two photos. I'll give you a prep of smile and hold. Whoops, hold on. Uh -oh. I know, I'm trying to get it. Hold on. Technical. Um. Honor, do you know how to? Hi, if you're operating under the name of Venice Coral, would you mind uh, turning off your screen share with us?
There we go. That was perfect. Okay, let's try it again. So hi, I will give you a prompt and I'll tell you to smile and hold. I'll take the picture, I'll tell you to relax and then I'll take one more and we'll be done. And if your picture's not on the screen yet, if you wanna turn your video on, that would be great. Here we go for the first one, everybody smile and hold. Perfect, you can relax. And one more time. And smile and hold. All right. Thanks so much. And thanks for being here again. Okay. And I saw that we had somebody who typed in the chat box. Fair warning, I'm a blinker. So uh, <laughs> hopefully uh, you did not blink. Okay. Let's get back into our slideshow mode. And we'll, we'll continue on by way of some just very brief introductions. Um, in, in terms of our friends at the Patterson Foundation, uh, most of you probably know Deborah Jacobs. She's the president and CEO. She's not with us today, but she does send regards to everybody. You may even see her tweet uh, at, at one or two points throughout the session today. Michael Corley, you can wave and say hello. Uh, Senior Consultant for Administration at the Patterson Foundation. Of course, you've met Connor LaGrange. He is uh, fellow number four at the Patterson Foundation, who uh, has joined recently and hails from the Lilly Family School of Philanthropy at Indiana University. And of course, uh, Josephine Eisenberg, who you have just met without Josephine to handle initiative support uh, for everything we do in this thriveability work, uh, we would probably be nowhere. So thank you so much, Josephine. I would like to also just give a special shout out to uh, somebody who's an even newer, newer member of our team. He just joined yesterday. His name is Michael Zimmerman. Michael, if you can wave, say hello. hello. Um, <laughs> he uh, is fellow number five at the Patterson Foundation, has just moved to Sarasota from uh, beautiful Brooklyn to New York. So delighted to have him on board. And then of course, last but not least, we wanna introduce you to somebody who is absolutely key to this team. His name is Alexander Miles Thrivemore. Uh, you know, it's hard to find good people these days. There is a shortage of folks. So we just hired an emoji. Uh, he's our, he is our thriveability, chief thriveability mascot. Uh, and you're gonna see him pop up at various places throughout today's session. So please give a big wel warm welcome to uh, Alex. For those of you um, who aren't familiar with the Patterson Foundation or perhaps just need a refresher, uh, very, very, very uh, much a part of our um, region and focused specifically on strengthening the efforts of people, organizations, um, and communities, and focused specifically on issues that address mutual aspirations, that foster wide participation, and encourage learning and sharing. Uh, you likely know the Patterson Foundation uh, for their generosity on the Giving Challenge. Uh, I venture to say that most, if not all of you uh, and your organizations have participated and been beneficiaries. Uh, of course, the Patriot Plaza, Suncoast Campaign for Grade Level Reading, Digital Access for All, and several other initiatives that, um, that are just near and dear to many of our hearts. Uh, by way of introduction to myself, my name is Michael Oxman. I'm one of the managing partners and principals in a firm called No Margin, No Mission. I'll tell you more about what that is in a second. And I will just uh, pass the baton over for Larry Clark to say hello. Good morning, everybody. It's still morning here. I'm, I'm in Seattle area. So uh, uh, welcome. And I look forward to uh, providing some additional information in just a few minutes. Thank you, Larry. Uh, no margin, no mission. So what we do is help nonprofits become stronger and more thrivable through earned income, through social enterprise, and through entrepreneurial practices. And we really are passionate about helping organizations boost their revenue and increase their mission impact. Uh, we've partnered with the Patterson Foundation for eight years plus um, and have loved all of the thriveability work that we've done in tandem with them throughout the four county region. 
So with that, today's goal is quite simple. We wanna give all of you the opportunity to explore participating in the Patterson's Foundation Foundation's 2021 Thriveability Initiatives. So what we're gonna to cover today is uh, the why, the what, the who, and the when related to those initiatives. And we'll also have some time for some Q&A. Let's start with the why. And uh, I think quite simply, as, as Alexander Miles Thr Thrivemore points out here, as organizations, as nonprofits, uh, we've all been through a lot over the past year and a half. Um, and we've oftentimes been in this sort of survival mode, uh, sustaining or maintaining mode. And what we're really encouraging each of you to do and to think about is to, um, to really think about how to go beyond survive and sustain and, uh, and really think about ways that you and your organizations can thrive. Now, thriveability is a, a word that needs definition. So I'm gonna reintroduce Connor LaGrange to come back and share with us um, from the TPF glossary, Connor. Yes, so everyone is, as you continue your work and interactions with the Patterson Foundation, you'll quickly find out that we have uh, have had great success in creating our own words when we feel as though words may not fully describe our intent and or emotions. So part of part of TPF is understanding that you know we're attempting to invest and make lasting impacts, and and to do so, we we want to see others in our community reach a full state of being and thrive. So thus, thriveability. And as it says on, on your screens there, it's a desirable state of being for nonprofits and, and organizations achieved by the intentional strengthening of both the economic and the mission-oriented muscle. We believe that when those two things find alignment with each other, that's where you can start you know, finding your organization living in that state of thriveability. I'll send it back to uh, Mike Oxman to, to keep talking. Thank you. So building economic and mission muscle. Now, uh, with that in mind, we have a Zoom poll question, and I'm going to turn it over to Josephine to introduce the question. There you go. So the first poll question is assessing your organization's thrivability over the past year. Have you? And then just feel free to choose the one that meets what you think is your answer grown financially and delivered more mission impact than ever, maintained your mission and budget with room for improvement, struggled with significant reductions in budget and mission, or hit the wall and need some help. And so we have some answers coming in. It's a tie between the first two and it's going up and down. Who's the winner? Give you a few more seconds to make your choice. Looks like we're almost done. 83% of you have participated and we'll end the poll and I'll share the results. Looks like maintained your mission and budget with room for improvement is 50%. What do you think, Mike? Wonderful. Well, let me just comment on that. Number one, you're consistent with the group from two days ago. So uh, definite consistency here. But number two, and more importantly, is um, whether you're, you've grown, maintained, struggled, or hit the wall, when it comes to thriveability, um, what we have to share with you today will be relevant to, to each and all of you in your organizations. Um, so that's the good news. And um, Josephine, I'm going to exit this poll, and uh, we'll keep moving. Okay. So let's talk about the what. Um, what. What is this uh, Thriveability Info session all about? So what we're, we're going to share with you um, today is uh, the Patterson Foundation's Thriveability Initiatives, and there's two of them. So one, the one that you see on the left is called Advancing Mission Thriveability. And the one on the right is called Margin and Mission Ignition. And uh, I think you know we do have some folks on today's session who 
have familiarity with one or both of them. Some of the folks here have even been through uh, some of these initiatives before. But again, if you haven't and you don't have familiarity, let us tell you about these. So let's start with Advancing Mission Thrivability, which is also known as AMT. You will hear us use them interchangeably. So Advancing Mission Thrivability is an initiative that helps nonprofits strengthen their strategic decision-making ability. Strategic decision-making ability. And think about that from just the perspective of your own teams and your own organizations. You can always be better at making decisions, particularly when it comes to being more thoughtful and more strategic. And this initiative starts sort of with the understanding um, and the application of two important lenses. The first one is this mission-centric lens. So in the work that we do as nonprofits, we're all about the mission, but in terms of your organization's decision-making, always thinking about key decisions through that lens of how does it align with our organization's mission? Also importantly, with this initiative is this second lens. So as you're making decisions, are you also thinking about them from an economically informed perspective? So this idea that they can be aligned, that how can we further our mission and at the same time, um, further the economic thrivability of our organization is key. So I'm gonna turn it over to Larry to talk a little bit more about um, the logistics of uh, advancing mission thrivability. Thanks, Mike. <clears throat> so let's dive in and talk about what's, what's it all about? What is advancing mission thrivability? What's the process we're going to go through? So there are four virtual sessions and I'll have Mike pull those up. As you'll see, we have something called a webinar and something called a webversation. We do two webinars and two webversations during this um, initiative to start it off with. They're educational sessions. And you might wonder what's a webinar and what's a webversation? I'm going to turn it over to Connor for just a second. Give us some definition. Yes, thank you, Larry. As you can tell, I have become a bit of the TPF word guru for these past two sessions. Um, for Again, for TPF, the creation of words is, is always something that's fun. It helps us strengthen that creativity muscle. And these two words were actually born uh, out of necessity, given the, the current state of the world for the past 18 months and how everything shifted to a virtual nature. TPF is very hands-on in their approach to their initiatives, so the shift uh, was, was difficult for all. So we decided that we would make it a bit more fun by adding two new names. So a webinar combines the engagement and the interactivity of a learning lab that you may do online uh, with, with the education of a webinar. So it's together, we smushed two words together and created a, a new one. And then a, a, a webersation is, if you'll go to that slide for everyone, it combines the virtual learning platform of a webinar that you may do, you know, a, a session with, with many people, but we bring it down to a conversational dialogue, uh, more one-on-one -on -one style. So there's webinars and webversations, both are, are, are virtual offerings of our thrivability initiatives. Thank you, Connor. So we have two webinars and two webversations, and they take place over a four week period of time. So once a week for one hour, uh, we'll, um, we'll have this educational opportunity for you. There's be a little bit of homework that we're going to ask between the webinars, um, and uh, we'll be really clear about what that homework is, and it's always educational. So at the end of the webinars and the webversations and AMT, uh, a lot of learning and a lot of tools will be shared with you. And what we have found, and we've done this three times, uh, so far is that um, change begins to take place in your organization by just going through the webinars and the webversations. But wait, there's more. <laughs> so if you choose um, to hang in with us and have the interest and the wherewithal and the desire to go beyond the educational four webinars and webversations, um, there's, we have an opportunity for you. 
So what we'll do is there'll be a one-on-one -on -one consulting sprint. Uh, so Mike and I will work with your organizations over a five week period of time and we'll have a Zoom session and there'll be some homework in between there. And uh, in just a minute, we'll dive into what some of those conversations have taken place through some of those organizations in the past. We'll have a knowledge sharing session at the end. And at the Patterson Foundation, we love knowledge sharing sessions because it's a learning and sharing time. So after you've gone through the four weeks of the, the education and the five weeks of consulting, we'll bring the group together that went through the consulting sprint and you'll have an opportunity to share what happened, uh, the, the, the good things, the challenges that you had, and maybe the change that took place. So we call those knowledge sharing sessions. They last a couple of hours. So the results, valuable thinking, action, and in this case, outcomes. There's always change that takes place in organizations because they have gone through this consulting sprint. A lot of work can get done in five weeks. So let me um, share with you uh, who some of our Advancing Mission Thriveability partners have been We've actually worked with uh, three cohorts um, thus far, and you can see them in these three uh, sort of blocks. And uh, what we do is when we work with a cohort, as Larry said, we're working individually with them over the course of five weeks for the consulting sprint. And then they all come together at the end for a knowledge sharing session. So just as an example, you can see, look at the, uh, the block on the right, you can see uh, Venice Main Street. And in fact, we have the team on our session today from Venice Main Street, uh, Kara, RJ and Michelle, they've been through it. Uh, they were direct uh, beneficiaries of AMT and uh, they may even type something into the chat box at some point today to share uh, what their experience was. But as part of that cohort, the Lemur Conservation Foundation, Military Heritage Museum, the Multicultural Health Institute, and Samaritan Counseling. So you can see a very diverse group of organizations. They don't really share anything in terms of their mission, their focus areas, uh, but they all went through this because they wanted to uh, actively participate in this initiative beyond the webinars and webversations that we talked about initially. Um, so what are some of the focus areas that organizations that go through AMT uh, may choose for us to work with them on during that consulting sprint? And the good news here is that there is nothing prescriptive about what that may be. Uh, we simply say that we wanna focus with you and your team on some important decision-making areas within your organization. And those will come to light during the, uh, the webinars and webversations, but then we will focus on them for those organizations that wanna delve deeper into the consulting sprint. So one organization focused on creating high value events Another focused on creating mission aligned experiences that were worth paying for. So that, that idea that merging mission and uh, kind of the financial side of the organization. Uh, innovating to deliver more value to current and future customers. Uh, another organization wanted to focus on leverage and building some of their previous successes. Uh, another organization wanted to figure out how they could leverage staff and board um, to drive better results. And then a few more, uh, there was another organization that wanted to focus on how to mobilize their volunteers better, uh, monetizing offerings in new ways, planning for more effective fund development, something that's near and dear, obviously, to many of uh, our hearts. Positioning for strategic planning. And the last example here, uh, that we worked with an organization on is how to prioritize uh, the various offerings within the organization. So again, just to give you a, a sense for what are some of the areas that organizations focused on. 
But importantly, as we said before, each one of these focus areas is, that we would work with you on, we would be looking at through these two lenses, the mission-centric lens and the economic informed lens. Very important to this initiative. And that's why we talk about it in terms of thriveability and building the muscle for both the mission and the economic side of your organizations. Now, I wanna just pause because we've just thrown a lot at you as far as this first initiative goes, AMT. So does anybody have any questions so far about AMT? I'm gonna ask uh, Josephine uh, and Connor if we have anything in the chat box uh, or if anybody wants to type into the chat box, we'll spend a minute or two uh, addressing your questions. Anything from anybody, Josephine or Connor? No, no questions, but um, Deborah with Lemur Conservation Foundation did type in that they just finished the program and it's a phenomenal experience that they highly recommend. So thank you for sharing that, Deborah. And Kara from Venice Main Street typed in, great experience and very helpful to our organization. Strongly recommend. We identified earned income for us and value added for our partners five weeks to a successful outcome. So thank you, Kara, for sharing that. Wonderful. Um, and, and then Mike, there is one question. Uh, the question is, is the focus area determined by the organization? Uh, yes, what will happen is when you go through the webinars and webversations, we're gonna give you uh, that, some of that homework that Larry mentioned are um, some ways to think about various uh, decision-making areas in your organization. So those would likely get queued up during the webinars and webversations. So if you decide to participate in that consulting sprint, you would likely uh, you know, pull from those worksheets and we would focus on one or more of those areas. I think, you know, just as an example, uh, Lemur Conservation Foundation and also Venice Main Street, who just shared that comment, their comments with you, we actually focused on more than one uh, decision-making area over the course of the five weeks. So, you know, there's opportunity for us to spend time talking about those things that are going to be most important to your organization. It's a good question. There's another question. Does AMT consider merging as a way to minimize overlap or expand or coordinate mission? So I, I'm gonna briefly answer that question, which is yes, if that was an important you know, strategic decision-making area that would factor in those two lenses, mission and economic, uh, be, make it economically informed, the answer would be yes. But I'm just gonna ask everybody, uh, please hold those questions about would certain kinds of um, decision-making qualify for this initiative? Because we just don't have time to get into that, but you can certainly email us afterwards. I uh, will be happy to follow up with you. There is one more that I think is important. Um, how many people from the organization would you recommend to participate? Well, good question. We yeah. love in all of our initiatives uh, when, when there's three participants, uh, the executive director or CEO, a board member and a key staff member. So that is typically what we ask organizations to bring to the party because we've learned over time that when you've got those three sort of groups of stakeholders involved in these important conversations, A, they um, can contribute in ways that uh, are very meaningful and B, the collaboration that happens and the buy-in that happens are really important. So. That's, uh, that, would, that would be what we would ask of you, uh, especially as you move from webinars and webversations into uh, the consulting sprint. Uh, any other questions, Josephine or Connor? Something else came through. Um... I don't see any. There's okay. one, uh, one question that, um, that we get frequently is, is there a cost for your organizations to participate in this initiative? And the answer is no. This is a gift from the Patterson Foundation uh, to, you know, to each of your organizations. But of course, you're uh, going to be asked to make the investment of time 
uh, in, into the various components of the initiative. So with that, um, I think we'll, we'll keep moving. So let me talk now about our second Thriveability Initiative, uh, the one that we call Margin and Mission Ignition, or uh, MMI, as it's also frequently referred to. So this initiative is really about helping nonprofits explore possibilities to launch or grow an earned income venture or a social enterprise. So, you know, again, this, this idea that uh, nonprofits that have a business, something to sell, a, a, a product, a service, um, is a wonderful opportunity to uh, diversify your revenue um, to, to bring in income from sources other than the traditional sources, such as grants and donations and events and fundraisers. So not that we would ever discourage you from doing that, but this is another way to diversify your revenue and at the same time, build mission impact. So when we offer margin and mission ignition, which we've done now for several years, we've been through a number of iterations with organizations um, in our four county region. What we're looking to do is to give you and your teams the time and the space to think and to brainstorm and to discuss and to act, but specifically about entrepreneurial ventures uh, in your organization. They could be brand new ones that you're thinking about uh, bringing to life and launching, or it could be an, an existing one that you wanna grow and evolve and take to the next level. But again, with Margin and Mission Ignition, it's all with an eye to becoming stronger and more thrivable as an organization. And um, much like with AMT, we look at two important lenses. We do uh, the same with margin and mission ignition. So the goal being to boost revenue, which in turn can help you increase your mission impact. So let's okay. dive in and talk about what's, what is it? You know, what's it made up of? So we have four virtual sessions and these are all webinars. So, so as you can see, there's four webinars. Each webinar will be about 90 minutes. So it's a, it's a bit different than AMT where those are only an hour. These are an hour and a half and they're once a month. So they'll be um, over the course of a four month period of time. In between those webinars, there's some homework that we'll provide to you. And we'll also check in with you um, twice during that and have two Zoom sessions. So either Mike or I will sit with your team twice um, after webinar one and after webinar three and talk about what you've come up with, how's the homework going, how can we help, good ideas, you know, how do, how do you maybe gather some additional research to make a decision. So those are really um, quality times for your organization, your team. So there's four webinars, two Zoom sessions with us, lots of valuable learning and tools that we provide. And what we see is at the end of webinar four, that there is, you've learned a lot. There's some change taking place again in the organization around earned income, different way of thinking around budgeting, around prioritizing projects and programs. But wait, there's more, right? That's, I, I get to do both those slides, I'm, I'm happy. So organizations with an interest to go farther than the learning, the educational labs, uh, and have the desire to delve deeper, we'll have an opportunity to work with you again. So part of that, it's intensive. So with AMT, it's five weeks, once, once, once a week with us. With MMI, it's much more intensive than that because you're creating a business here and we wanna help you grow and launch that business. So it's intensive. What, what's it made out? What, what is it built around? So business planning. The first phase that we'll work with you is around business planning, and that takes a few months. So we'll work with you to actually create a really strong business plan um, that has three years of financials and all the, the revenue and expenses in it. We'll also then work with you in helping you implement the business. So we'll spend a couple more months, and this is where the rubber hits the road. 
you actually launch your business or grow it, depending on if you already had it or not. And we'll spend some time with you in working through some of the kinks that you might have, um, some of the opportunities, maybe connecting you with some partners out there in the community. So we'll spend a couple of months with implementation. And then the third phase of work, we call it tracking and monitoring, but it's really much more than that. We'll spend an hour a month for two years with you, and we'll talk to you about kind of what's working, what's not working, how can we help, brainstorming, maybe some other opportunities, maybe focusing on marketing or sales, depending on how it's going and the product rollout, um, and celebrating your successes. So that is a really um, important time for the organization. We don't back away from you. We'll stay there right, right by your side as you're rolling the business out for a couple of years. And all of this, again, is provided by the Patterson Foundation as a gift. So we like our knowledge sharing sessions, and there's two in this initiative, one in the middle of business planning, and then one at the end of uh, that first phase of implementation. And we'll bring those that are in this intensive project together um, and share what their business is, how it's going, um, what's worked, what hasn't worked. Um, and what we find is that a lot of learning and sharing takes place during those knowledge sharing sessions. And in fact, sometimes some collaboration takes place. We've actually seen some of the projects work together in the future on, on either something that they're rolling out or even something new. And the results, it's rigorous. It takes some discipline to do this, but a lot of thinking and action and outcomes. You have a business plan, you've launched a business and you have somebody by your side for almost two and a half years helping you move it all forward. So um, that's the pretty much the process we go through through Margin Mission Ignition. So just to give you a sense for um, organizations in the region that have participated in the this intensive um, phase of the initiative, you can see them here um, and they range again, uh, just like they did for AMT across the board. I mean, we've worked with um, health and human service organizations. We've worked with arts organizations. We've worked with museums. We've worked with um, uh, uh, animal organizations and the list goes on. And I think what's, again, what's most important here is that as an organization, once you've gone through those webinars that Larry talked about, you do have the opportunity for more. And if you are in a place where you're, you're really ready to take on an initiative like this, you would have the opportunity uh, to apply for and become potentially a part of this. Again, it's a significant investment uh, by the Patterson Foundation in the organizations that participate um, with the ultimate goal of helping those organizations be stronger by driving and boosting more revenue. So in turn, there's more ish mission impact. One thing we urge you all to do is to take note of these organizations for MMI. And then of course, the ones that I shared with you for AMT. And if you have interest and wanna learn more from any of, these, of the folks who have been through this, certainly feel free to reach out to them. Um, and you're all gonna get a copy of this uh, PowerPoint slide deck. We'll, that'll, that'll be in part of the follow-up emails that go out. So you'll have access to all these slides. Importantly, um, when we talk about earned income ventures or social enterprise, uh, organizations run the gamut in terms of the, those ventures, those businesses that they can either launch or grow and take to the next level. So frequently, uh, folks from nonprofits will say to us, well, what kind of business or what could we sell? Um, and the answer is, uh, it really is quite wide and varied. And you don't necessarily have to limit yourself or pigeonhole yourself in your thinking. And part of the beauty of our, of our webinars is we give you the opportunity to explore possibilities. So here's some examples. Uh, one organization uh, launched an applied behavior analysis clinic. Another organization 
uh, created and launched an art and supply store, both uh, a brick and mortar store in their building and an online store as well. Um, one of the theater organizations wanted to focus on expanding their community theater and growing it. We've worked with a number of organizations that have educational trainings that they want to sell in some way, shape, or form. Uh, the Humane Society wanted to expand their veterinary services. We've worked with a few organizations that have unique venues, uh, and they want to host parties and events. Um, the Literacy Council of Sarasota, we worked with on literacy training, so actually offering training in classes. Uh, the, uh, another organization launched a low vision store, uh, which happens to be called Peepers, and it's both a brick and mortar store and also an online store. Uh, we've worked with an equine therapy nonprofit, and they launched a recreational horseback riding business with the understanding that there's lots of people in the community who would pay to, uh, to go horseback riding. Um, we worked with a school to launch a school store. Again, both a physical store, brick and mortar, but also online to sell school supplies, to sell class actual supply kits, to sell branded merchandise, hoodies and t-shirts and PE uh, uniforms and more. Uh, we worked with an organization who launched a senior daycare center. We've worked with a number of nonprofits that have thrift stores and they want to grow and expand them. And then the last one is um, venue rentals. And we've worked with a couple of organizations that look to rent their space uh, in some way that will really align with their mission and help create more impact. So those are just some examples uh, for you to think about. Again, we wanna work with organizations that are going to either launch or grow earned income ventures that are designed to both boost revenue and increase mission impact, okay? That's very important to the thriveability work that we do. If you just said to us, oh, we're gonna launch a business um, that doesn't really align with our mission, um, but we know we can generate money from it, we would say, that's fine, you can do that, but most likely it would not be one of the uh, organizations that we would want to help build a business plan around to launch. So again, revenue and mission impact, very important. So let me pause for a moment here uh, to talk, uh, see if you have any questions about margin and mission ignition. Um, and I, I, again, I, there are some folks who are on today's session who have been through Margin and Mission Ignition. Uh, Kara, again, I know from Venice Main Street was uh, with us when Historic Spanish Point went through that. Uh, so she's been directly involved in the initiative and there may be a few others on as well. Uh, Josephine, Connor, any questions in the chat box? Nothing, okay. Um, let me answer, uh, there's a couple of questions that we had. Again, is there a cost to participate in MMI? The answer is no. Uh, it's a gift from the Patterson Foundation, starting first with those four labinars for those organizations that uh, have interest in going deeper. Uh, again, there'd be an application process, but um, for those that make it in, the Patterson Foundation uh, would invest in that uh, phase of the initiative which is quite significant and uh, would be looking for those organizations that would have the greatest likelihood for success. Um, somebody also asked how many organizations can participate in the, uh, the intensive phase of the initiative. And while we don't have a preconceived uh, number of organizations, we will say that you know in previous cohorts, We've worked with as many as um, six or seven organizations and as few as three. So um, that has typically been uh, the range or the number of organizations that we've worked with. Okay, uh, unless there's anybody, any other questions, we'll keep moving. There is one question. Um, it says, what percentage of your MMI clients succeed in achieving the goals 
<clears throat> of boosting to revenue and increasing mission impact by completing the entire course? Great question. So um, I would say that like any other uh, organization or business, either that's in startup mode or, uh, or looking to evolve and grow a business, um, there are a, a certain number who will succeed and a certain number who will not. I would say we have had uh, great success in terms of the organizations we've worked with who have been successful, albeit with the understanding that we've also had a few who have not been uh, and have you know, sort of moved on beyond those earned income ventures or enterprises. Uh, happily, you know, we, we do keep a running tab on the cumulative uh, revenue that is generated by the organizations that we work with through MMI. And uh, the organizations we've worked with that you saw on that list have generated in, in excess of $12 million since the beginning of our working with them. So again, keep in mind, we've been, we've been doing this now for several years, but uh, the, the bottom line is that uh, cumulatively, they have done both those things that we talk about in terms of thrivability. They've boosted their revenue, and in so doing, they've been able to impact more lives and increase their mission impact. And on top of that, there's something that we talk about called ripple effects. So there's other benefits that accrue to the organizations that participate in, them, in, in this. They, they grow their uh, sort of their, you know, their muscles in a number of other ways as well. So good question. Okay, let's keep moving. Um, I want to just share with you um, sort of the who. So who can participate uh, in both of these thrivability initiatives, AMT and MMI. So no surprise, uh, everyone who was invited to our session today uh, has presumably uh, an up-to-date profile in the giving partner. So that is a, uh, a requirement to participate in these initiatives. And uh, whoever asked the question earlier about who do you encourage particip to participate uh, helped cue this up because again, we do encourage a team of at least three people to participate. Your executive director, CEO, a board member, and a key staff member. Now, of course, more people can participate. Uh, we love that, but uh, we, we, we hope that you will have uh, at minimum those three uh, who, would, who would be involved in our work. So when are the key dates and time? You will get uh, sometime tomorrow, Friday, October 1st, hard to believe, tomorrow will be October. Uh, you will get a link to our online registration, okay? So be on the lookout for that. If you don't get it for some reason tomorrow, uh, by end of day, reach out to us and let us know. Uh, check your spam folder as well. If you don't get it, just to make sure that it didn't land there. Um, some other key dates and timing. So let me talk first about advancing mission thrivability, AMT. Our, this is our strategic decision-making initiative. Remember, we've got two webinars, two webversations. Um, the first one would be on Wednesday, October 20th, and then they would occur uh, for four consecutive weeks. So the next one on the 27th of October, the uh, lab, second webinar on November 3rd, and the second webversation on November 10th. All of those sessions are an hour. They're from 10 to 11 Eastern. And we would just urge you to sort of pencil those in on your calendar uh, and join us. You will learn from these. You really will learn from them. You'll get some great tools that you can apply to your own organization's decision-making, whether or not you wanna keep going and apply for that consulting sprint will be absolutely up to you and your organizations. But this will be a valuable opportunity for you. So that was AMT. Now, MMI, Margin and Mission Ignition, key dates and timing. As Larry said, remember, we've got four labinars. They are 90 minutes each, and these are spaced out over the course of a month. So, um, 
essentially our first one would be on November 17th. And that one's a primer. It's called nonprofit is a tax status, not a business model. Why should your nonprofit care? The second webinar is on December 8th. And that's all about exploring earned income possibilities. Open your minds to exploration. What could we launch uh, you know, or grow in terms of an earned income venture? The third webinar is on January 12th. And that one is all about uh, preparedness for success. So even though you think you might be ready to succeed at an earned income venture, maybe you're not. So we'll talk about what are some uh, important factors to consider as it relates to your preparedness to succeed. And then the last one is on February 9th, and that's all about business planning for nonprofits. So as, as Larry said earlier, uh, the focus of this initiative if you really decide that you want more uh, and, and want to go into that intensive um, phase of work, would focus on business planning and business plan implementation. Okay, so again, those sessions are from 10 to 11.30 uh, Eastern time uh, for 90 minutes. So anybody have any questions about timing or logistics? Any questions on timing or logistics? Again, we ask you if you, um, if you can pencil those dates on your calendars that we just shared and at least free yourself up to, to join us for the webinars. they will be enormously helpful to you. You will get uh, quite a bit of learning and some wonderful tools and resources that you can use within your organizations. Josephine and Connor, any questions in the chat box about timing or logistics? There's a... a Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Connor. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say there's a few questions about offerings in the future. If the two of you would speak to whether or not this will roll back around in 22 or 23. So the answer, the, the simple answer to that question is uh, we don't know. Um, we have offered um, both of these initiatives uh, on several occasions. But we never know uh, when or if there will be a next one. If we do decide to offer one or both, you will know by uh, virtue of us reaching out to you. Um, but there's no commitment at this point to anything more than the ones we've shared today. So good question. Again, it's just even though your organization may not be ready for the what's more with either of these initiatives, we would strongly encourage you to just at least come to, sign up for and come to, for AMT, the, the two webinars and two webversations, they're only an hour each, uh, and or for MMI, those four webinars. Because again, tremendous and valuable learning opportunity. Other questions? There's a couple of questions about how to sign up, which I think you'll get to. Okay. Um, and then I wanted to just assure everybody tomorrow you'll receive a copy of these PowerPoint slides in an email with other information and the video recording of this. So you'll receive that tomorrow. So don't worry um, if you haven't gotten all of the dates written down. You'll be able to see all of that tomorrow in the email. And as Josephine said, there will be a link to register uh, for Labinar 1 for AMT and for Labinar 1 for MMI. So that will be in the uh, follow-up email that you receive tomorrow. So I just wanna um, sort of summarize uh, and wrap this. We've shared with you today uh, two thrivability initiatives from the Patterson Foundation, Advancing Mission Thrivability, Margin and Mission Ignition, and I think you know the thing that each of you should uh, just give some thought to is which one or both of these make sense for our organization. AMT being about being better, stronger at some some strategic decision making, and margin and mission ignition being focused on uh, on boosting revenue and mission impact through earned income and social enterprise. So as the old saying goes, decisions, decisions, but that's a good thing. And we're giving you the opportunity to opt into one or both, or of course, none, if that is, uh, is your preference. 
We also encourage you to uh, learn more about these initiatives. Uh, if you would like to, you may visit the Patterson Foundation's website, pattersonfoundation.org. There are nonprofit thriveability, AMT, and MMI pages on their website. There's blogs about both of these initiatives and a number of them. Uh, and uh, we also have a video that was produced on AMT, Advancing Mission Thriveability, that's really worth watching. Uh, you'll hear from organizations that participated in the initiative, why it was of value to them uh, and what they got out of it. Uh, and of course, if you're not following us or the Patterson Foundation on social media, we encourage you to do that. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, there's a wealth of information that gets posted every day about our initiatives, and you will definitely learn more. Uh, and of course, as I said before, uh, if there's any questions about anything that you've heard today, reach out to us. Uh, our email addresses are here, uh, both for Larry and myself. And I guess just as we wrap, because uh, we've got about one minute left, we want to thank all of you for joining us today for participating in this info session. We certainly appreciate uh, you taking the time uh, to come together and be a part of this. And uh, I think in closing, we do hope that you will register for one or both of the uh, initial webinars for uh, our Thriveability initiatives. Uh, so on behalf of all of us, thank you. Uh, we hope to see you uh, soon. And uh, again, don't, don't hesitate to reach out to any of us if you have questions. So thanks everybody.